Welcome back to Real Life Fishing. Uh, those of you that watched the last video on spinning versus casting probably recognize that I'm still standing in the exact same place in my garage and I just added another rod. So what the hell are we going to talk about now? What we're going to talk about now are musky rods and musky setups, right? I'm getting the boat ready to go musky fishing. So uh, her rod with that, uh, that Daiwa Fuego LT on there, right? It's a musky shop rod. If you're a musky fisherman, I'm positive that you've heard of Raleigh and Helen's world's largest musky shop. Uh, and if you haven't, uh, go and Google it. Get their catalog, order from them. They literally are the world's largest musky shop. They have everything. Uh, I have no idea what their website address is or what their catalog looks like since uh, we're fortunate enough to live in uh, northern Wisconsin and they're not that far of a drive from us. So. Uh, her rod and reel were picked up right at Musky Shop and were used to go fishing later that same day. Uh, they even spool the line up for you free of charge when you buy it. You got to buy the line, but they spool it for free. Uh, so then the next, uh, the next rod over here is the one you saw with uh, my, my Lexa 400 series on there. Uh, I've got an identical rod to this with a Lexa 300 series high speed that I use. Um, but uh, so this is a uh, Fenwick Elite musky rod. Uh, anybody who's watched my rods episode knows of my disdain for um, St. Croix uh, and your choices in, in musky rods really aren't as, uh, as wide as they are with bass rods or, or panfish rods or, or any of that type of thing. But uh, that said, I've had uh, these two Fenwick Elite rods now for uh, some time. Um, oh God, I don't know. It's got to be coming up on probably six or eight years. Um, you know, nice, nice, big, uh, nice, uh, nice big handle down there for, for casting. I mean, they're, they're, they're great rods. You know, I, I've, uh, uh, the other thing I like about them too, is that the warranty on them is way better than, uh, than St. Croix. Um, so I bought these, these two rods, uh, these two Fenwick elites. I, I bought at the same time from a local guy and, um, brought them home and, um, they, they come in, uh, uh rod bags. Uh, you know, kind of like a, a pleather bag. It's got Velcro over the end and, and whatever. They're, they're nice and fancy, right? So <clears throat> I used those bags for storage for, for quite a while. And, you know, uh, the, the boat that we had at the time, I could actually fit them completely in the rod locker. Uh, these are eight foot six rods, uh, same as her, uh, her spinning rod. Uh, they don't fit in the rod locker on, on this boat now. But uh, so I used to just throw them in there. I was, I was not very kind to them at all. Uh, you know, they had a bag on them. They were protected, right? Wrong. Uh, uh, I broke off the tip guide uh, on one of them. Just the ring. I didn't actually break the rod or break the, you know, the legs on the guide. Just the, the ring on the, on the tip guide uh, popped out. Uh, weirdest thing ever. I'd never seen it before. But so whatever. I, uh, I took, the, uh, took the rod off or took the reel off and took the line off and threw the rod back in the truck and drove back over to the local shop and swapped that rod out on the spot, at the shop, got a new one, didn't have to call anybody, didn't have to mail it in, didn't have to do shit, right? Big endorsement for Fenwick. If they're available near you, get one. You won't regret it. They're good stuff. I've caught all kinds of fish on them. Uh, so next up then, the next, the next rod that we're gonna take a look at here. Uh, so this one, I'm told unfortunately that this reel has uh, recently been discontinued. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, this is actually the, uh, the saltwater version of this reel. Uh, just because I got it cheap, right? And I thought the blue was cool, but uh, it is a Revo Toro winch. Um, so it's a, uh, a casting reel, obviously, but uh, it's got a very, very low gear ratio. Um, I honestly don't recall what it is. I don't think, yeah, it doesn't say on here what it is. Uh, the, and I think the winch is a, a nickname actually. But um, so this is on my very first uh, musky rod ever. It's a Shimano uh, Sojourn, I think they say that. Um, I just bought this rod from the local, uh, the local farm shop for, you know, I don't know what it was, 79 bucks or 99 bucks, something like that. Maybe. I don't know. It's a, I think it's a seven foot six, uh, no seven foot, uh, short little, short little rod, but this was my first musky rod. Um, and as luck would have it, I did pretty well. Um, living in Wisconsin, uh, we're, we're fortunate enough that, uh, you know, this is kind of the musky fishing capital of the world. And uh, a few weeks ago, we went to a class that was taught by uh, Jim Sarek. Uh, so if you're a musky fisherman, I'm quite certain you've heard of uh, Jim. You've probably seen him on uh, his television shows or maybe read his books like we have. But uh, 
we attended uh, some class with him, and uh, he said that these uh, these sojourn rods make fantastic trolling rods. Uh, so that's exactly what I've done with this rod, is I've set this up for trolling. And the reason I've got the winch on there uh, is this little feature right here. You see that, that little silver knob there? Uh, right here, this guy. So this actually clicks back and forth, and what that is is it's a clicker, right? So when drag starts getting ripped, uh, this reel will click. So I control with this thing and set that drag so that it'll start clicking when a fish hits it. And then I can grab the rod, tighten up the drag, and give that a good solid hook set before I bring that guy in, right? So um, <clears throat> I really, really like that because then I don't have to you know, keep my eyes on the rod. I can pay more attention to where I'm driving the boat, right? And that's, that's kind of important if you're the boat driver. Um, one other unique thing about the way that this rod is set up compared to uh, the other one is the leader that's on here. Um, I don't know if you can quite make that out. I don't know if I'll get it all in the frame, but uh, it's got a 36 inch uh, floral leader on it, right? Very, very heavy leader, um, but it's 36 inches long. Uh, that's, that's what you're supposed to use for, uh, for trolling. Um, I'm not entirely certain why, but based on what I know of uh, trolling for other species, uh, you want that long leader so that if, uh, if a fish comes up short, uh, and bites the uh, the leader instead of the lure, uh, they don't bite you off, right? Um, so, anyhow, um, the other uh, the other rods we've just got standard length, you know, like a nine or maybe a, a twelve inch leader on there. Um, nothing nothing too out of the out of the ordinary. But uh, so some other some other types of leaders then, right? So I want to show you my leader case. So this is my leader case, right? Just in case. Remember I mentioned this guy, he's the one that made this fancy box that my bourbon is sitting on? Yeah. Um, if, you've, uh, if you don't have anything from this guy in your boat, call him. He's a fantastic dude. And again, I'm not sponsored by this guy. I don't get anything for saying this. I just really, really believe in his product. Um, it is not inexpensive, but it is worth it, uh, all of his stuff. But you call him up, you tell him uh, what kind of boat you've got. And if he doesn't already have the measurements for it, you can send him the measurements for the boxes that you want, and he will make them exactly to your spec. I mean, look at look at how tight the fitment is here, right? That that's got to be like that so that I can get that lid open, you know. And then on the on the other side, that is tight up against the side of the console. I mean, he built this thing exactly to the spec that I provided, and let me tell you, the, they're second to none, you know. And and. His prices, while, while they seem kind of high when you, when you hear them, um, you know, do some homework. I, I actually went and looked up how much it would cost me to, to buy that much polycarbonate and the, the tooling and, and whatever else to make one myself. And uh, I, I couldn't do it for very much cheaper. And I'm sure that my construction quality wouldn't be the same as his since he's done, you know, thousands and thousands of these. So we just said, screw it and had him build them. But uh, he also makes these really nice leader tubes. Right, so you can see it holds all the holds all the leaders in there. Um, you can just unscrew the top. Hang on a second here. I need two hands. There we go. So you you loosen the top, and then that comes off, and then you've got this this nice four way divider in there that holds all of your leaders. Right, uh, and that's important. You know, you want your leaders to be straight. You don't want them all bent up. But uh, so the other the thing I wanted to show you about the leaders in here um, is actually. This leader right here, right? So this is a, a stiff wire leader, right? So these are used for throwing jerk baits. Um, you know, you attach your uh, your lure onto this end, and this end gets tied onto uh, your your line. Um, and then as you're as you're jerking that lure, this stiff wire will keep the line away from the lure, right? You know, you, you give it a good jerk, and then this will fall down. I get a little more room here. There we go. So you give this a, a good jerk, right? You got a jerk bait on the end here, like a swick or something. You give it a jerk and, you know, the leader will fall down and the line will be on it. It'll keep that line from getting tangled in your in your hooks on the on the lure, right? Because the, the, the lure is going to continue to glide forward a little bit after that jerk. And if you've got just a soft, uh, you know, floral leader on there, uh, you know, there's there's a very real possibility that uh, that, that floral is going to come around and get tangled up in your in your trebles and follow your your lure and then you're not going to catch shit ask me how i know that yeah anyway uh so the next thing then that uh, that i wanted to show you about uh getting ready for musky fishing is uh it's actually this box here um or um, bag i suppose as it were 
Uh, so this is my, uh, my very first musky bag ever. Um, my better half made it for me uh, because I did not want to go out. I mean, the, the thought of buying a tackle box for musky baits at the time just made me ill. I didn't even own a boat yet at this point. You know, when I bought that, that first Shimano rod, uh, that was not the reel that was on there either. The reel that was on there was an Abu Garcia Ambassador, big round red one, piece of shit. Don't ever buy one. It broke the first trip out. It's like 50 bucks. Uh, with reels, especially bait casters, you and musky stuff in particular, um, you know, for bait casters, <clears throat> you really, really do get what you pay for. Spend the money. Thank me later. But uh, so I was going on a trip with a buddy, and uh, I needed a box, and so uh, uh, the, you know, I started looking online at at what musky tackle boxes cost. You know, portable musky tackle boxes, and it made me ill. I mean, they're they're terribly expensive. You know, I I understand the lures are huge. The box has got to be huge, right? But so this is just like, a, you know, a $20 soft-sided cooler uh, from Walmart is what this is. And then check this out, though, right? Where's the zipper on here? So we're going to unzip this so that you can see what's in there and watch this. Look at that. You know what that is? That is pieces of gutter. That's all that is. Pieces of plastic gutter cut with a chop saw and push down in there and it works great, right? Look at that, there's, there's a musky bait, right? Just drop that back down on the storage that it's supposed to be in. And then what do we got in here? Oh, we've got a bucktail that's too long to stand up in this box because I wanted it to be level with my deck, right? That's not the fault of the box. It's the fault of my boat. I didn't want it to be any taller. If you've got taller decks in your boat, you can get a taller box, or I could order one and tripped over it, but I didn't want to do that either. So, um, yeah, so these are like, you know, double twelves, you know, these, these big ones here, you know, and, and trolling girls, right, from, uh, from Musky Mayhem. Um, yeah, so that's, oh, here you go. And then I've got this great big, huge, real deep diving trolling bait here, right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this is fantastic. Uh, if, uh, if you guys need to get us yourself a musky tackle box, uh, I highly recommend this. Um, since she built this for me, I, I don't know where she came up with the idea, but uh, since she built this for me, um, my other two friends that, uh, that I've rigged up their boats, uh, they, they both musky fish and they've, they've both built boxes just like this. Um, you know, just like I said, a soft-sided cooler bag from, uh, from Walmart and uh, some plastic gutter sections and it kicks ass. Go and get one. Uh, you will love it. And once again, if you're not subscribed, if you're not one of my, my 11 uh, subscribers, uh, please go ahead and smash that button down in the corner there because I'm turning into a commercialized asshole. And uh, I'm going to go inside and enjoy my McKenna 10 uh, while I upload these for all of you faithful viewers to watch. So have yourselves a great evening. And uh, hopefully tomorrow I've got... Uh, some video of some large muskies. We'll see. Have a good one.